I'm in the maestro's dressing room with the man of the hour, Met Music Director Yannick Nézé Seguin. Hello, maestro. Hi, Angel. How nice are you feeling? Oh. <laughs> I mean, I'm so happy. This music makes me so happy. The fact that the chorus and the cast and the orchestra plays and sings so well, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm just the happiest man on earth now. <laughs> That's wonderful. Maestro, you've conducted at the Met for 10 years, but this is your first Puccini opera here. What made you choose Turandot? I think probably because it's such a choral opera. Um, I have a love for chorus, um, this is my background, and it's also an opera I've conducted twice before coming here, so I think it, it shows all my comfort levels on, in, you know, in the, the music, of course, and with the great arias and ensembles, but especially also with the chorus, which has so much to do. Yes, so with both the chorus and the orchestra, what aspects do you especially want to bring out in this extraordinary score? I think what we associate with Turandot very often is the verticality, those big chords, those loud moments, and they are thrilling, especially in that production. There's so much sound coming from the way the scenery is done. But I want to show more the tenderness, you know, non piangere liu in the act one, and also even the ping pang pong scene when they talk about their place in the country. Uh, it's such tender and really true, intimate Puccini, and that contrast really interests me. Yes, and Turandot is such a tour de force for the principal artists. What kind of work did you do with Christine, Yusuf, and Eleonora to help them with these very demanding roles? Well, I have to credit a lot my music staff here. We have at the Met the best music staff in the world. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm bragging, but that's true. <laughs> and uh, you know how they are. And I think we really worked as a team to con have a continuity and be able with all of them to reopen the score, look at what Puccini intended, and I have to say they were so great at trying not to take anything for granted but just look looking back at the score and that's what we did and the rest I'm just trying to be there to support them and to to love them so that they can express to the world all their talent yeah so well, maestro I love your Instagram and I follow <laughs> you on Instagram I love yours too <laughs> thank you and so the Met followers have reached out and asked some questions at Big Willie 12 sent in this question since this is Puccini's final lifetime achievement in the realm of opera what quality or feelings does Turandot possess that his other operas don't have. Yeah. I think what's common is his taste for exotic, uh, something he wanted to really inhabit or imagine the worlds that were not in Italy and mm -hmm. just try to adopt these sound worlds. But I think what is unique is really how, you know, the death of Liu and all the scene, I think he was probably foreshadowing his own uh, end of life. And I think it's maybe a more vulnerable piece sometimes than the other operas. Yes, and there's one more question from at P.S. Bart. What dictates, what dictates whether or not you will use a baton or not? <laughs> in general, in opera, I use a baton, except for Peleas last year, which I thought was very, very liquid and fluid, so I like to use my both hands. But the baton, you know, I like to go back and forth <laughs> and try to master with or without. <laughs> yes. Well, later this season, the Maestro HD audiences, the, pit, Maestro oh. the, the audiences are going to see you as in uh, conducting Berg's Wozzeck. Yes. I'm looking forward to that, Maestro. Me that's too. Your cue. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry I need to go, and I want to give a shout out to everyone in the world, especially in Montreal and in Rotterdam. So, see you soon. Thank you, Maestro. Thank you. Toy, can toy, I, toy. Can I leave it to you? Yes. Toy, 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 Maestro.